evening. My name is Victoria Bennett. I'm a professor at RPI. And tonight I'm asking the question, is the road to learning engineering judgment a virtual one? And when I first set the title for this talk, I asked with my collaborators listed here whether they liked this title, that they thought this was a good title. And I had originally said, is the road to teaching engineering judgment a virtual one? And the overwhelming response among the group was that it has to be learning because students are at the center of this. And hopefully that comes through as you see what we're talking about here. But following along the road analogy, this idyllic picture from campus is of a road, a local road, just below one of our buildings, the building that I teach in. And I often bring my students out to this site, and you can see that it doesn't look so idyllic in this picture. Uh, and I think that engineering judgment really plays into what you see here. And even if you don't want to spend time teaching your students or hoping that your students learn engineering judgment, those of us who do report to ABET in the room will have to find a way to assess that. And that's what I'm showing here as part of the new criterion for ABET. So just previously, I heard uh, from Scott Brandenburg that being the ABET coordinator is not a job that anybody should take on. And it is my new job in our department. But I'm hoping that what you see through the work that we're doing at RPI, that we might have a tool that allows you to assess engineering judgment in your students, even if you don't necessarily know how to do that yet. The next piece is about learning, really. And so maybe all of us could close our eyes and think back to a time where we had an impactful moment in a classroom. And for me, it was in my earth science class with Mr. Kenzel. And he would make this face where he was imitating students taking a Scantron exam with their pressing the pencil so hard that they rip through the page and their tongue sticking out. And, and that is burned in my memory as an impactful learning moment. So maybe there's these special times and special things that we can do in the classroom to really make an impact on our student, engage them in our topic, in geotechnical engineering in this case. And maybe the way to do that is through educational games. So if I think of educational games, I think of this. And I'm hoping, I'm just hoping that there's a few of you in the audience that are of my era that know that this is from the Oregon Trail game. And actually, to come full circle, the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium in 1974 produced the Oregon Trail game. So 1974 doesn't speak to when I was in school, but it was still around in the 90s. And asking my students what do they think of when they think of educational games, maybe this resonates a little bit more with the younger folks in the room. But I want to speak to an educational game that we're working on at RPI. Educational games have been around for a while, and obviously some leave lasting impressions on our personal educational journeys. I'd like to think that perhaps GeoExplorer is part of the future of educational games. GeoExplorer was developed through NSF funding and collaboration between researchers at RPI, Northeastern, Southern Methodist University, Broad-Based Knowledge, Cal State Fullerton, and Manhattan College. The important tenets of this game were to provide practical field experience to undergraduate geotechnical engineering students and build in assessment of their performance within this virtual space. Teaching engineering judgment is a gap in our current pedagogy. Now, as we travel on this virtual road, let's see if perhaps this is a way to teach engineering judgment. We are arriving at a field site where students can conduct a CPT. The CPT exercise is part of an exciting new mixed reality experience to integrate field testing and practical experience into the existing civil engineering curricula. Students have the opportunity to conduct a CPT at four different field sites. Part of what enhances this experience is the inclusion of the mobile phone in the bottom right portion of the screen. 
As students are completing tasks in the virtual environment, they are receiving messages from their boss with specific instructions about each particular field site. Through the designed variability in the four field sites, students are able to apply what they have learned in lectures to real virtual scenarios. The mobile phone is also used as an assessment tool. The messaging that appears on the screen are questions that in previous educational research would likely have been included as a survey or in-class assignment. This built-in assessment tool allows us to gather information about the student's knowledge and confidence related to CPT in a sneaky way, simply as a conversation with the boss. As we begin to collect CPT data, you will hopefully see this is further opportunity for students to learn through doing. Students must select the speed to advance the cone, use manual advancement for a few, the first few meters before setting the test to automatic. As the cone advances, students must monitor the tip resistant values and inclination angle. The stopping depth, depth is selected by the student and speaks to their own judgment based on the instructions from the boss. For each site, students are asked to interpret their collected data and report back to the boss about the soil type encountered at a revel relevant depth. The student selection is recorded along with other gameplay data such as how long they spent on certain tasks. A valuable feature of this CPT environment is the ability for students to fail with a safety net. As the students, as you saw there, one student said, my boss is gonna be mad. We have big plans for the future of this virtual environment. Everything you have seen so far already ex exists and has been implemented on four campuses for over 500 undergraduate students. What you're seeing now is the game called Levy Patroller, developed by Casper Hardeveld, now at Northeastern University. This game was used to train civilians in the Netherlands to inspect levees and report concerning indicators. During Casper's PhD research at TU Delft, he was able to show that civilian game players performed as well as experts in recognizing critical failure features in virtual levees. We will combine the previous levee patroller assets into the Ge Geo Explorer space. In this new robust Geo Explorer game, we will provide lots of opportunities for students to practice engineering judgment, and through the built-in reporting feature, we may also have an automatic assessment of their applied judgments. The mixed reality piece of this project is currently realized through the use of a mock internship experience with the fictitious company Terra. Students apply for a position on the Terra website and receive an email with their welcome package and instructions to complete assignments within the virtual environment. This internship experience will be expanded to now include levy inspection and design. Our vision is to use a traditional classroom assignment and establish technical software packages to produce designs that are then incorporated into the virtual environment. Students will enter the virtual environment and be able to see their designs perform under extreme loading conditions. As we watch the progress of this levy failure, we can think about the impact of this learning through failure's opportunity that it may have on our students. In the virtual environment, students will be able to repair failed sections and reflect on what went wrong with their original design. In the next few years, Geo Explorer will be a mixed reality experience where students collect virtual CPT data supplement it with real lab tests conducted as part of their existing coursework, use traditional software to produce designs that are built in the virtual environment, and tested under a variety of loading conditions. Perhaps this is where the future of educational games is heading. And maybe this is what students, years from now, when they think of educational games and what might have been an impactful moment in a classroom for them, perhaps this is the impression that they will leave with. I was expressly forbidden to do a live Oh, a live uh, playing of the game, so I thank you very much for indulging the video portion. These schools that you see here are committed to implementing this new Geo Explorer experience on their campuses, including both the CPT module and the, uh, and the levy inspection and design module. So I leave you with the question, 
again, is the road to learning engineering judgment a virtual one? And let you keep this picture in your mind so that in the future, when students think about GeoExplorer and think about how to develop their engineering judgment, perhaps this is also what you'll think of. I want to give big, big, huge, huge thanks to the students uh, at RPI. These are not the RPI students, these are my kids. <laughs> but the RPI students, uh, three out of the four listed there, and the RPI team who just won the uh, GeoWall competition, so kudos to them. Also to my mom who came to this conference to watch my five-month-old baby so I could give this talk. Thank you so much.